Hi folks! Welcome to episode 5 of Nibbles and Mouse Bites. Today's episode is a 3-in-1, covering bit shifting, testing, and logic instructions. All told, we'll be covering about 8 different instructions that give you different ways of manipulating data at the bit level, rather than dealing with whole bytes. For the first set, let's cover the bit shifting instructions. Bit shifting is the process of moving bits left and right in a register. Mathematically, shifting is a cheap way to multiply or divide the value by 2 for each shift. Take this example. As we shift left, we multiply, first to 2, and then to 4. But as we shift right, we end up dividing, back to 2 and finally to 1. The 8502 gives us two methods for moving bits around. We can either move in a zero from the left or right using the shift instructions, or we can rotate bits through the carry flag to the other side. Mathematically, shifting is just multiplication and division, but values are lost as they shift out of the carry flag. Rotating, on the other hand, preserves the bits, but is not mathematically correct. The 8502 gives four instructions that we can use for shifting and rotating. These are ASL, or Arithmetic Shift Left. This opcode shifts all of the bits through the left through carry and brings in zeros from the right. The complement to ASL is LSR, or Logical Shift Right. This does the same job, but shifts to the right and brings in zeros from the left. For rotation, we have ROL, or Rotate Left, which does what it sounds like. It shifts the bits left, but instead of bringing in zeros, it brings in the bits from the carry flag. And finally, we have ROL's complement, ROR, or Rotate Right. This does the same work as Rotate Left, just in the other direction. So now that we know what these instructions do, let's put them to work. Let's write a program that shows visually what happens when we shift the bits in the VIX sprite expansion register. We'll use all 8 sprites in this example, so we'll want to draw something using sprdef for each one so we can see what happens visually. Once all the sprites are ready, we'll take a shortcut and write a basic program to turn on and space out the sprites at the top of the screen, going from sprite 8 to sprite 1. I've previously covered these basic instructions in Nibbles and Bytes Episode 3, so I won't go into detail here. Once we've run the basic program, though, we're ready to write our assembly program to shift the bits around. The first thing our program has to do is set at least one bit in the D017 sprite expansion register. Each bit of this register controls the double height expansion of each of the sprites in turn, but we have to seed it with a single bit first. If a bit is set, that sprite will be expanded vertically. Next, our program rotates the bits in D017 to the left. As we rotate the bits through the register, the sprites above will stretch out vertically each in turn. Since the 8502 runs at 1MHz and the VIC refreshes the screen at 60Hz, we have to delay the loop so we can see the effect, which is what this next chunk of code does. It simply loops for 256 times 256 times, or 65,000 iterations. Finally, we jump back to the rotate left instruction in an infinite loop. Okay, let's give this a shot. Note that once the bit gets to the yellow face, or bit number 8, that it disappears for one cycle. This is because the bit is going into the carry flag of the status register. The next cycle through, it's rotated back to the D017 register and continues to the left. The other set of instructions we'll cover will allow us to do individual bit manipulations. There are three main opcodes used to manipulate bits on the 8502. AND, OR A, or just OR with the accumulator, and EOR, or Exclusive OR. The 8502 designers also gave us one more opcode for testing bits, which is imaginatively named... BIT. 
Let's cover these in more detail. The AND opcode does a logical AND operation with each bit of both the accumulator and the operand. Essentially, if both a bit in the accumulator and the operand are set, the result is also set. Once AND is done, it stores the result in the accumulator. In real-world use, the AND opcode is used to mask off bits or select bits from a register or value that we want to work on. In this example, the operand is acting as a mask that filters out bits in the result. Zeros in the mask filter out bits, but ones allow bits through. AND is a logic instruction, so it shares the same addressing modes as any other logic or math instruction. The next opcode is OR with accumulator. This operation does a logical OR with each bit in the accumulator and the operand. If either the accumulator or the operand, or even both, bits are set, then the result is also set. Finally, OR A stores the result in the accumulator. This opcode is the complement to AND, and is generally used to set bits in a value without disturbing others. In this example, the set bits in the operand mesh together with the value in the accumulator. This opcode also shares the same addressing modes as AND. The last logic opcode is EOR, or Exclusive OR. Like AND and OR, this opcode does an exclusive OR operation with each bit in the accumulator and operand. This works similarly to OR, setting bits if one or the other is set. The exception is when both bits are set. In that case, the result is zero. Like the other operations, EOR stores the result in A. On the 8502, EOR is typically used to invert bits and takes the place of a NOT opcode. In the example, you can see that set bits in the operand selectively inverts half of the accumulator's bits. Finally, like AND and OR A before it, EOR also uses the same addressing modes. Okay, let's see this logic in action. Let's write a program that inverts the bits in one of our daemon sprites. We'll make use of subroutines and also the EOR instructions so that we can selectively invert the bits in one of the daemon sprites. Our main subroutine is actually pretty simple. We'll use the Y register to index into the sprite's shape data, so we initialize it to 0 first. Next, we call a subroutine to increment Y by 3 and effectively skip to the next row of pixels. We load X with hex 13. This is the number of rows in a single sprite minus the top and bottom. We call flip row to invert the pixels on the next row of the sprite, decrement X, and then loop until X reaches 0. At this point, we've inverted just the pixels we want to. Finally, we call skip row again to skip over the last row of the sprite and jump to the top of the loop to invert the pixels again. The next subroutine is skip row. This subroutine simply increments y by 3, which is enough to skip over a whole row of pixels in a single color sprite. Our second to last subroutine is flip row. This routine flips the three bytes that make up the row in turn each with a different bit mask. The bit masks are set so that the first two and last two of each row are not inverted. The last subroutine we'll use is called flip. First, we preserve the value in A by pushing it to the stack. We then do an exclusive OR operation using the bit mask in A and the address stored in location 69 offset by Y. We could have used an absolute address, but using zero page allows us to easily redirect the subroutine anywhere in memory. Once the EOR is done, we have the new bits in A and have to store them back. We then increment Y so we can move on to the next byte, pull A from the stack to restore it, and finally return. We'll use the same basic program we had before to put the sprites in place at the top of the screen. Before we can run our program, we need to set the pointer to the sprite we want to manipulate in location 69. Okay, let's give it a shot.
Logic is all well and good, but what if we want to test a bit? This is where the bit instruction comes in. This instruction does a logical AND operation against all of the bits in the operand and the accumulator. When it's done, it stores bits 7 and 6 of the operand in the negative and overflow flags of the status register. If the result of the AND operation is 0, the 0 flag is set as well. What's most important is that this instruction does not modify the contents of the accumulator or memory. Consider this example. In this case, we're using the accumulator as a bit mask to test bits in the operand. When the bit test is done, the seventh bit in the register is transferred into the negative bit of the status register. Likewise, the sixth bit is transferred into the overflow bit. Because of this, we can directly test the state of the 7th and 6th bits without extra effort. Aside from that, the value in the accumulator is also anded with the operand. If the result is non-zero, as in this case, the zero flag is cleared. In this way, the zero flag can be used to check if any bit is set or cleared, depending upon the bit mask in the accumulator. Keep in mind, the result of this AND operation is thrown away. If we need to keep the result, our best bet is to use the AND instruction instead. Since it only works with zero page and absolute addressing, bit is quite limited. This means you can't test other registers, and it can't be used to test indexed or indirect addresses. Nonetheless, bit is useful, as we'll see in our last example. For our last program, We'll adjust our bit rotation example to allow us to move the bit using the joystick. Like our earlier program, we'll use a series of subroutines to help simplify the code flow. First, we initialize the vertical stretch register. Next, we load 40 hex into X and call the delay subroutine to add a small amount of delay between each shift. This helps to slow down the movement a little. Next, we test to see if bit 3 is cleared in the joystick register. If the bit is 0, meaning the user is pressing the left direction, the 0 bit will be cleared and will jump to our left movement routine. We then shift A left to test for the 4th bit in the joystick register. Like before, if the bit is 0, meaning the user is pressing right, we jump to the right movement routine. Finally, we jump back to the delay and repeat. The next routine is our delay loop. This decrements y 256 times the value of x before returning. Since we chose a value of 40 hex, this means the delay will loop 16,000 times. Our third subroutine is the left movement subroutine. This rotates the bits in the vertical stretch register by 1. If the bit went out to the carry flag, we just repeat the rotation so that we can skip the blank space. Note that this subroutine isn't called from a JSR, so we have to JMP back to the top. The final subroutine is the right movement routine. Like the left, this routine rotates right and repeats if the bit has entered the carry flag. Since we have the basic program still in RAM, we'll reuse the program to set up the sprites. We'll augment it slightly with a bank statement and a sys statement to automatically call our assembly program. Alright, let's give it a shot! Well, that's it for the logic and shifting instructions. I hope it helped some in your understanding of how those instructions work. I can say, some of those threw me for a loop while making this video, which is one of the reasons why it took me so long. For the next Nibbles and Mouse Bites episode, we'll cover the jump and subroutine instructions. But before I go, I'd like to give a shout out to my latest patrons. Matthew Miller, Peter Proderson, and Alice Crawford. All of you, my patrons, are amazing. You all keep me inspired and engaged and I hope this series is up to your expectations. Thank you so much! If you'd like to join them in your patronage, or talk with all of us in Discord, you can click on the links in the description below. 
Thanks again. Have a great Thanksgiving, and I'll see you in the next episode.